exactly right. Uh, <laughs> I think so. Funny. We are uh, uh, getting sight of our other person houses, right? You are now looking at my <laughs> my room, my bedroom <laughs> wall. <laughs> it's so funny. Technology, it's COVID has changed a lot. Yeah. Concerning. We are live. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning to you all. Uh, um, I'd like to say hello to our dear colleagues, uh, postgraduate students, and um, newcomers that are here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to those who don't know me, I'm Professor Cristina Pacheco. Uh, currently, I coordinate this program, uh, the Master Program in International Relations. And um, it is to a great pleasure to me to welcome all of you to our opening lecture. This opening lecture is going to be um, a particular one, I think, because we are not only discussing the hot topic of the moment, Russia and Ukraine, uh, but we are going to be able to listen to Professor Konstantin Kurilov, um, which is a Russian. So from a Russian perspective, um, our distinguished guest um, is going to be able to give us a perspective that we are we are we haven't heard so far right and that's um after two difficult years where our lives changed completely because of covid 19 although it's still in a virtual way um we hope this opening lecture set the tune of what we expect to be 2022 and beyond an exchange of knowledge and experience regarding international relations and its related field of research. Right now, the war in Ukraine, which enters in, uh, its 19th day, will have a strong political, humanitarian, and economic impact, along with the pandemic in the world. Brazil is already feeling its impact with the recent rise of the gas price that happened two days ago. Our government has already announced, the, our federal government has already announced the production of fertilizers, which Russia detained a great part of the production. In order to decrease or at least minimize the impact of our dependence in the agricultural sector, with no further ado, uh, I'd like to invite Professor Jonathan Santos, who is going to be the chair of the opening lecture, to the floor so he can present our distinguished guest. Please, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here with you all from Moscow, Russia. Uh, yes, indeed, as uh, Dr. Christina has mentioned, we have been through a lot in the past few years. Since 2020, we have seen the world change and it's of paramount importance to discuss such issue as this right now uh, with Dr. Konstantin Petrovich, who will be uh, having a lecture on how Russia's and Ukraine relations are tied and how it can you know, uh, develop as well as in the future. I would like to say that uh, Ala Barzova will be joining us a little bit later She's having some technical issues, uh, but she'll be here anytime soon as well. And in order to introduce Dr. Kostasin Petrovich, he's a doctor of historical science and a professor of the uh, Department of Theory and in of International Relations at Rudan University in Moscow, Russia. He's also deputy head of scientific activities and member of the University Association for Contemporary European Studies in the United Kingdom. He's a member of International Studies Association um, of the Islamic State and European Eurasian Studies uh, in the US. And he's also a member of the Russian Military Historical Society. And therefore, he's an important, uh, would be an important speaker to contribute not only for 
uh, students, researchers, and also academics that are interested in the current issue. And later on, we'll be having uh, Dr. Ala Barzova, who will be uh, discussing uh, how Russia and Brazil's relations are important in this time of uncertainty. So Dr. Ala Barzova is a professor of international relations at the Department of Theory of History of International Relations at Rudan University, also in Moscow, Russia. She specializes in history and culture of Latin America, as well as is a professor of think tanks and the development in Spain and Europe, as well as the US. Um, so I'll be giving now uh, the floor for Dr. Konstantin to start his lecture. And there on, we follow, we'll be following with uh, the discussion and questions. Thank you. Dr. Konstantin, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, I'm very glad to take part in this event. I uh, thank uh, you to uh, invite me uh, for uh, this uh, lecture. Uh, I uh, thank my colleague Jonathan Santos, especially because uh, uh, we know each other for a long time. Uh, and uh, uh, you asked me to uh, present uh, the lecture about uh, lecture about uh, Russian-Ukrainian relations. Uh, uh, it's uh, my topic. I specialize uh, in uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, policy, internal, external, foreign policy. Uh, so uh, I have uh, some. Uh, information for you, uh, and uh, I have a presentation. Uh, yes, uh, here it is. Um, uh, I, I know you would like to uh, listen about uh, the current situation in uh, Russian Ukrainian relations by my uh, deeply opinion, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, without the understanding the history. Uh, the background of uh, our relations, we could not uh, understand the current situation. Uh, so I uh, prepare uh, for you my lecture uh, and name uh, it uh, Russian-Ukrainian Relations 1991-2021 Stages and uh, Problems. Uh, and uh, let's start uh, our lecture. Uh, lecture. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, my theme, and uh, then we uh, consider uh, the stages of uh, Russian-Ukrainian relations. Uh, first of all, I'd like to speak uh, for that the collapse uh, of uh, the Soviet Union led to uh, the formation of independent states, the former Soviet republics which were forced uh, to build interstate relations. Uh, in the context of building bilateral Russian-Ukrainian relations, the fact that historically uh, close relations uh, have developed between Russia and Ukraine in uh, all spheres was of uh, particular importance and uh, the economic system of the two uh, states was actually unified. In addition, both uh, Russia and Ukraine were extremely interested uh, in uh, uh, softening the consequences of the collapse of the USSR, especially in the economic sphere, which would have uh, uh, been very difficult without uh, maintaining uh, close cooperation between Ukrainian and Russian enterprises. However, uh, such an approach was not supported by uh, non-regional states. Uh, each of which uh, had uh, uh, its own uh, interests uh, in relations uh, in relation to Ukraine. Uh, there are uh, some uh, stages uh, in our relations. Uh, considering the policy of the Russian Federation towards Ukraine, uh, it's uh, conditionally possible to distinguish uh, six uh, stages. Uh, uh, here they are, 1991-1994, uh, the first stage, 1994-2004, uh, second, 2006-5, uh, 2010, uh, the third stage, 2010-2014, uh, uh, 
fifth stage, uh, fourth stage, uh, and uh, 2014, 2019, the fifth stage, and the, the current stage, uh, 2019, the present time. Uh, uh, how we uh, uh, um, this stage uh, is based. Uh, the stage uh, stages are based uh, on uh, the um, uh, periods of the reign of Ukrainian presidents, and uh, we. Um, uh, uh, look through uh, these uh, stages and uh, I uh, tell you about our relations in these stages. The first stage uh, the first stage uh, is uh, associated with the tenure of uh, President uh, Leonid Kravchuk uh, at the head of the Ukrainian state. Uh, from the very first days of independence, uh, the uh, Ukrainian leadership headed for confrontation with Russia. At the same time, no attempts uh, to eliminate pain points uh, through negotiation over uh, uh, concessions as a rule did not change the position of Kyiv. Ukraine has begun to create its own statehood uh, on a uh, rigid uh, nationalist and the Russophobic basis. The anti-Russian theme immediately became one of the key tasks, uh, not only in school textbooks, uh, but also in the press and on television. Uh, reproaches uh, against Russia and Russophobic statements by representatives of the Ukrainian leadership have become uh, irreversible. In May uh, 19. Uh, 92, Kyiv refused to sign uh, the Collective Security Treaty of the Commonwealth of Independent States. And uh, in uh, 1993, the Ukrainian leadership did not go beyond associate membership and did not sign an agreement on the formation of the Interstate Economic Committee, the first supranational body of the Commonwealth of Independent States. Ukraine uh, did not sign the chapter of the Commonwealth of Independent State either, thereby technically refusing to become a member of the Commonwealth of Independent State. Uh, the main territorial problems um, problem was the ownership of the Crimean Peninsula and the city of Sevastopol, the uh, naval base of the Black Sea Fleet. An attempt to resolve territorial issues uh, between the Ukrainian uh, Soviet so Socialist uh, Republic and the Soviet Russia was made even before the collapse of the USSR. Uh, on November uh, 19, uh, 1990s, uh, Boris Yeltsin and Leonid Kravchuk uh, signed the first interstate document that laid the foundation for future relations between uh, independent Ukraine and Russia. According to Article 6 of the treaty, both parties recognize and respect uh, the territorial integrity uh, within uh, the borders currently existing within the USSR. Uh, at the initiative of Russia, it was possible to resolve the issue of the nuclear uh, free status of Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan which transferred to Russia the entire atomic potential located on their territories. On uh, October 24, 1991, a resolution of the Verkhovna Rada Ukrainian parliament on the non-nuclear status uh, of Ukraine was adopted. And on January the uh, for, uh, 14th, uh, 1992, a uh, tripartite uh, agreement between Russia and the United States uh, of America and Ukraine was signed. According to it, uh, all atomic charges were uh, dismantled and exported to Russia. Strategic bombers and uh, mines for launching missiles, uh, all of them were destroyed. Uh, in return, the United States and Russia provided guarantees for the independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. On June uh, 23, uh, 1992, President Yeltsin and uh, President Kravchuk signed an agreement uh, in Dagomis, 
uh, on the further development of interstate uh, relations, which emphasized that the parties will build their relations as friendly states. Uh, second stage, 1994-2004. Uh, uh, the second stage uh, was determined by the activities of President Leonid Kuchma. The main feature of this stage was the idea of reintegration of the uh, two countries supported by Russia but not shared in Ukraine, which largely determined uh, Moscow's approaches towards Kyiv at that time. However, uh, from the uh, very moment uh, of gaining independence, the Ukrainian leadership did not share the idea of reintegration with the Commonwealth of Independent States countries. And the Commonwealth uh, itself considered it uh, a kind of tool for civilized divorce. Since uh, in its foreign policy, the country sought to move as far as possible from the former former republics uh, of the USSR. Uh, such an improvement predetermined the policy of the uh, Ukraine within the framework of the post-Soviet space for a long time. This stage was characterized by crisis in bilateral relations caused by a number of controversial uh, issues uh, and uh, unresolved problems. One of these issues was the territorial uh, affiliation of the Crimean Peninsula, transferred by the Soviet Russia to the Ukrainian uh, Soviet Socialist Republic in 1954. Uh, it was noted that the, during the transfer of the peninsula, the norms of the legislation of the USSR in force at that time were violated. The parties managed to resolve the status of Crimea by granting it uh, an uh, autonomous uh, status by Ukraine. A significant factor that influenced uh, the crisis in bilateral relations was the issue of uh, Sevastopol, where precisely regarding its status uh, during Soviet times, there was not administratively part of Crimea, which gave uh, um, rise to dispute uh, its belonging to Ukraine. The problem of the territorial belonging of the Crimea was closely connected with the problem of the div division uh, of the former Black Sea Fleet of the USSR. After negotiations in 1997, it was decided uh, to divide the Black Sea Fleet between the two countries. An agreement was reached that the Russian um, Black Sea Fleet would be based in Sevastopol until uh, 2017. Problems with the energy supply um, uh, also became an acute uh, issue since many oil and gas pipelines from Russia to Europe during the Soviet uh, era uh, were led through the territory of Ukraine. Uh, in the 1990s, Ukraine was unauthorized sampling gas to fill its storage facilities with gas that was exported to Europe. After the conclusion of new agreements, part of uh, Ukrainian gas debt uh, was written over against the transfer to Russia of some Soviet weapons inherited by Ukraine from the USSR including strategic uh, aircraft such as uh, 295 and 260 bombers. A significant place in Russian-Ukrainian relations was occupied by gas conflicts. The gas issue in relations uh, between Russia and Ukraine arose almost immediately after the collapse of the USSR. The destruction of the common economic space of the former USSR gave rise an economic crisis in the newly created states in all sectors, in particular, in particular in the oil and gas sector. The focus of Ukraine industry and the utilities uh, sector on uh, Russian gas has increased Ukraine's uh, dependence on Russia. 
the geographical position of Ukraine also determine the inverse relationship. The passage of the majority of export gas pipelines uh, through Ukrainian territory and the uncertain prospects for laying alternative gas pipelines to Ukrainian uh, ones allowed Kyiv to defend its own position. On the other hand, Kyiv illegally seized gas from export to Europe into its own gas storage facilities. Conflicts related uh, to the transportation of uh, 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 Russian export gas through Ukrainian pipelines in the 1990s demonstrated that, that, that uh, no political arguments and agreements, statements and agreements can stop the unauthorized withdrawal of Russian export gas. Therefore, it was extremely important for Russia to lay alternative routes for energy supplies to Europe by passing the territory of Ukraine. Considering uh, Ukraine's uh, policy towards Russia, it's difficult to clearly identify the stage, uh, stages uh, since all the leaders uh, of independent Ukraine, without exception, uh, sought uh, to uh, integrate with the uh, Euro-Atlantic structures. The pace of this process uh, did not depend on the aspirations of Ukraine, but on the position of NATO and the European Union which were in a no hurry to accept Ukraine as their member. During President Kuchma, uh, Kuchma's presidency, Ukraine uh, pursued a multi-vector foreign policy, thanks to which re relations between Ukraine and Russia remained at the uh, fairly stable level. Moreover, according to the big treaty of uh, 1997, Ukraine and Russia were proclaimed strategic partners. In 2002, uh, Ukraine became an associate member of the uh, Eurasian um, economic cooperation and then took steps uh, to join the common uh, economic space. Industrial cooperation developed between Russia and Ukraine in various sectors of the economy. The intensive development of uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian-Russian relations was uh, facilitated by the fact that the European Union and NATO did not consider the possibility of Ukraine joining this organization. Uh, the third stage, 2004-2010. Uh, uh, in uh, 2004, presidential elections uh, were held in Ukraine in which the main uh, struggle unfolded between two candidates, Viktor Yushchenko and Viktor Yanukovych, who was considered by many a pro-Russian candidate, in contrast uh, to the pro-Western candidate, uh, Viktor Yushchenko. In his public speeches, Yanukovych uh, declared the near for integration with Russia, about giving the Russian language the status of a second state language in Ukraine, thereby trying to win the sympathy of voters uh, from the southern and eastern regions of Ukraine. Ukrainian-Russian relations escalated after Yushchenko uh, came to power during the Orange Revolution of uh, 2004, which Russia assessed as uh, anti-constitutional and uh, stimulated by the West. Yushchenko's victory in the elections in uh, Ukraine was for the most uh, part perceived both in Ukraine and in Russia and in the West as the biggest defeat of uh, Russian foreign policy in recent years. The new authorities of Ukraine were not aimed uh, at uh, deepening integration with Russia. A course was taken to accuse Russia of organizing the Holodomor of 1929-1933 uh, and aimed uh, at gradually ousting uh, the Russian language from use in Ukraine. The main issue of bilateral relations uh, after 2004 were demarcation of uh, uh, demarcation uh, of the border, Ukraine's membership in NATO, the problem of the Black Sea fleet of the Russian Federation in Sevastopol, gas conflict uh, conflicts, 
to solve uh, specific uh, problems in March uh, 2005, the Putin Yushchenko Special Commission uh, was created within the framework of four committees on defense, foreign policy, economic, and humanitarian cooperation. In uh, 2006 and 2009, um, uh, there were two uh, sharp gas conflicts, uh, which led first uh, to the termination of Russian gas supplies to Ukraine, and later to Ukraine's uh, unwillingness uh, to resume the transit of Russian gas through its territory to Europe. Due to the unreliability uh, uh, of Ukraine as a transit country, the Russian Federation decided to implement projects uh, for the construction of new gas supply routes to the European Union. The commissioning of new pipelines such as the Yamal, Euro uh, Yamal Europa uh, Nord Stream has led to a gradual reduction in the uh, flow and gas through the Ukrainian gas transmission network. In turn, Ukraine announced new priorities in its energy policy, setting the task of reducing dependence on Russia for gas supplies by searching for alternative sources. Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan were considered as such sources. The task was set to create an open, transparent uh, market for the sale uh, and purchase and transportation of hydrocarbons from the Caspian region to Europe by diversifying supply routes by passing Russia. To this end, Ukraine reanimated Project Guam. It was an uh, international organization uh, named by the first alphabet uh, Georgia, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Moldova, Guam established in the second half of the 1990s, actively participated in the creation of the uh, Baltic Black Sea Caspian Energy Transit Space, holding Energy Summit in 2006-2008. Uh, uh, These events were distinguished by political engagement and non-participation of Russia in them. Most of these plans have remained only declaration not having received their practical implementation. Fourth stage, 2010-2014. In February 2010, Viktor Yanukovych, who won the presidential election in Ukraine, put forward new foreign policy guidelines, increasing the economic return from external contexts uh, while main, uh, maintaining the neutral status of the country. The new president believed that the Ukraine's strategic goal was not to join NATO, but to join the European Union. In addition, uh, in addition uh, Kyiv did not support uh, the idea of a union uh, of the states of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. The European choice of Ukraine, according to to Yanukovych is associated uh, with uh, an increase uh, in, a, in the economic uh, efficiency uh, of the country, the observance of the rights uh, of all national minorities living in the Ukraine, as well as the uh, establishment uh, of Ukraine as a reliable uh, business partner. In April uh, 2010, the president of the Russian uh, Federation Dmitry Medvedev visited uh, Kharkov city in Ukraine. During the visit, the leaders uh, of the countries reached uh, an important agreement on extending the stay of the Russian uh, Black Sea Fleet in Crimea by uh, 25 years and on the supply of Russian uh, gas to Ukraine on preferential terms. Uh, in mid-2010, uh, a new law uh, of Ukraine on the fundamentals and domestic uh, and foreign policy was adopted. The law fixed the refusal uh, of Ukraine from the course to join NATO, securing its non-bloc uh, status. European integration remained uh, a foreign policy priority at the same time. Thus, uh, hopes uh, for a change in foreign policy priorities towards Russia did not come uh, true. 
Despite the pro-European course of the new leadership of the country in October 2011, the heads of government of uh, most uh, of the Commonwealth of Independent States countries, including Russia and Ukraine, signed the Treaty of the Free Trade Area. At the end um, of uh, 2012, uh, beginning 2013, Russia made efforts uh, to include Ukraine, Ukraine in the customs union project, noting the benefits for the Ukrainian economy from participation in this organization. Uh, first of all, we are talking about the opportunity to purchase, purchase uh, Russian energy uh, carriers. Uh, at the preferential rates. However, Ukraine emphasized eff emphasizing its calls uh, towards European integration, uh, agreed to participate in the customs union only as a observed, proposing interaction in the three plus one form. Russia, in turn, said that uh, it considers that uh, such uh, a format uh, unacceptable. In this regard, Ukraine did not receive selective uh, preference in trade with the countries of the customs union. Yanukovych believed that uh, it was enough for, to uh, blackmail uh, Russia and the West uh, with the fact that the Ukraine uh, could go uh, to another and demanded uh, gifts uh, from uh, both uh, sides. He tried to play a double game. Allegedly moving towards Europe, he sent uh, encouraging signals towards Russia as well. Uh, in 2013, Ukraine uh, took a step uh, towards the European Union. On sem September 11, uh, 18, uh, the Cabinet of Ministers uh, of Ukraine approved uh, the draft association agreement with the European Union. This caused a uh, backlash in Russia. In October, uh, President Putin said uh, that in the um, uh, event uh, of an association with the European Union, Ukraine would not be able to join the customs union. Despite the policy of uh, signing an association agreement with the European Union, uh, discussion, uh, discussions uh, continued. Uh, in uh, Ukraine about the advantages and disadvantages of this movement, uh, move. Of this move. Uh, at the end of November uh, 2013, the government of Ukraine suspended preparations uh, for the conclusion of the association agreement between Ukraine and the European Union, which led to mass protests in the western Ukrainian regions and in Kyiv. To consolidate Ukraine's policy of not signing the agreement, in December 2013, Russia announced a reduction in gas prices for Ukraine and the provision of significant financial support of $15 billion. At the expense of the National Wealth Fund, Russia purchased Ukrainian eurobonds uh, worth on uh, $3 billion. Uh, fifth stage, 2014-2019. Uh, In February uh, 2014, a new stage of Russian-Ukrainian relations began, which was associated with the violent seizure of power by the opposition. The legitimate pre president of the country, Yanukovych, was overthrown and the new government was formed. Uh, the actions uh, of the new authorities were supported by the West, which relied on nationalist forces whose ideology denied uh, any reproachment with Russia. The coming of these forces to power in Kyiv was not accepted in Crimea and Donbass. Moreover, the new authorities immediately launched uh, an offensive, off offensive uh, against the rights uh, and interests of Russia, trying to force them to accept uh, what happened in Kyiv. Uh, after the referendum of the reunification of Crimea with Russia and the beginning of the conflict in the uh, Donbass, 
Further actions of the new authorities in Kyiv were aimed at the maximum possible severance of ties with Russia. Uh, in uh, 2014, President Poroshenko banned any cooperation with Russia in military sphere and tore up uh, the corresponding agreement between the two countries. The Ukrainian authorities banned uh, the uh, broadcast of Russian television channels and films. Avoiding, uh, avoiding uh, bilateral personal contacts uh, with the uh, with the Russian leadership, Poroshenko, after the failure of the attempts uh, the Ukrainian army to carry out a forceful blitzkrieg in the Donbas and provoke Russia's uh, involvement in the internal Ukrainian conflict, had to go to multivectoral multivectoral uh, negotiations uh, in the uh, so-called Minsk. Represent representatives uh, of Ukraine, representatives of Russia and the Organization of uh, Security and Cooperation in Europe, as well as leaders uh, of the self-proclaimed uh, Donetsk and uh, Lugansk uh, People's Republic, Republics. And uh, uh, another format, uh, diplomacy format, Normandy uh, with uh, leaders of Russia, Ukraine, Germany and France. The result was uh, the signing of the Minsk agreements. On February, uh, on February uh, 12, uh, 2015, the leaders of Germany, France, Ukraine and Russia in the format of Normandy 4 in Minsk agreed uh, uh, on a set of measures uh, to implement the Minsk agreement, Minsk uh, the second in order to de-escalate the armed conflict in Eastern Europe, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine abandoned uh, the policy of non-alignment and NATO membership, uh, again uh, became one of the main priorities in foreign policy, which was recorded in the new version of the law uh, of Ukraine on the fundamentals and domestic and foreign policy in 2015. And the new uh, national security stage uh, strategy uh, of Ukraine in the same year. And Russia was named the main adversary uh, in the new version uh, of uh, military doctrine of Ukraine in 2015. Summing up uh, among the internal pol political factors influencing the foreign policy of Ukraine, one should single out the uh, instability of the political system of Ukraine, which led to struggle between the elites for power. The political reforms carried out by the leadership uh, of the state have one, uh, once uh, again shown the Ukrainian authorities a guide in their actions, uh, not uh, so much by national interests uh, as by the principle of political ex uh, expediency. Uh, an important uh, internal political factor in shaping, in, uh, in shaping Ukraine's foreign policy is the sharp gap uh, in interests between elite groups and the society. Thus, a significant part of the representatives of mass groups, uh, especially in the southeast of the country, was not satisfied with the course of the uh, one-sided pro-Western orientation of Ukraine's foreign policy, which one way uh, or another influenced uh, the actions of the state leadership. As a result, Ukrainian foreign policy has led to an aggravation uh, of relations with Russia, while at the same time not achieving success in integration with the European Union. President Poroshenko and the authorities of Ukraine were aimed uh, at a uh, unilateral orientation towards the United States and the European Union, uh, while destroying all ties with Russia. Such uh, a one-sided orientation uh, is unlikely to produce uh, tangible, uh, the tangible uh, results uh, in times of economic and political uh, unfavor. Uh, Therefore, Ukraine uh, will apparently have to develop economic relations with Russia and other countries of the Europe, uh, Eurasian Economic Union and the Customs Union. Uh, and the uh, sixth uh, stage, the current stage, 
2019-2022. The new president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, confirmed the invariance of Kyiv's strategic course uh, for maximum integration with the West, which implies the country's entry into the European Union and NATO. In relations uh, with the European Union, the Ukrainian authorities focused uh, on solving practical issue of European integration, uh, calling on Brussels to clearly define and conditions for Ukraine's admission to the European Union. With uh, regard to NATO, emphasizes uh, is also placed on uh, practical steps uh, leading, uh, in the opinion of the Ukrainian authorities, to full-fledged membership of Ukraine in NATO. Unlike uh, Poroshenko, who persistently sought to obtain a NATO membership action plan, Zelensky relied on the implementation of less ambitious uh, but more realistic tasks. In particular, ensuring uh, the compatibility uh, of the armed forces of Ukraine with the armed forces of the uh, alliance. On May uh, 26, uh, 2020, Vladimir Zelensky approved the annual program for the implementation of Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic integration policy. Particular uh, attention in the program is paid uh, to the issue of uh, achieving the country's uh, compliance with the criteria for membership in NATO, the transfer of the security sector and defense system of Ukraine to the standards of the alliance. In June 2020, Brussels granted uh, the request of the Ukrainian cabinet of ministers to grant Ukraine the status of an uh, emphasized uh, opportunities uh, partner. The main goal of this program is to strengthen the uh, interoperability uh, of the troops uh, of the participating countries uh, with the armed forces uh, of NATO. Thus, uh, Kyiv is uh, consistently creating the uh, necessary uh, pre uh, 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 prerequisites uh, for joining the ranks of its Euro-Atlantic allies, which uh, consider uh, the Russian Federation one, one of the main potential adversaries. In the Russian uh, direction, in the Russian direction, uh, there were no fundamental changes in Kyiv's policy. Uh, the main condition for improving bilateral relations, Zelensky calls the return to Crimea to Ukraine. He considers uh, the deoccupation of peninsula to be the same priority as the return of Donbass, and it's uh, in uh, and uh, in this regard, he has repeatedly called on Western partners to uh, tighten the regime of anti-Russian sanctions. Kyiv remained uh, an active opponent of the Nord Stream 2 project and tried uh, in alliance with the Poland and the Baltic states to oppose its implementation. Uh, contrary uh, to pre-election promises, the new uh, president uh, continued, continued his uh, predecessor's uh, course towards uh, um, the total Ukrainization of the country. In particular, Zelensky did not abandon Poroshenko's language policy. Moreover, in March uh, 2020, Zelensky signed the law on complete general secondary education, transferring from the uh, September the 1st, uh, 2020, all public schools to teaching in the Ukrainian language. Education in Russian, according to this law, uh, is preserved only in elementary school. A stable anti-Russian cons uh, consensus has developed in the country. A wide range of Ukrainian elite uh, hold Russophobic position. One of the most important factors behind Zelensky's victory in the presidential election uh, in uh, 2019 was his promised promise uh, to end the war in Donbas. 
However, the situation in the southeast of the country continued to be uh, at the uh, impasse. Having, to, uh, having come to power, Zelensky initiated the resumption uh, of the work uh, of the Normandy 4 format, which was suspended in 2016 due to the lack of progress uh, in the implementation of Minsk agreements. At the same time, Zelensky saw his main task uh, in rewriting the Minsk agreements with the support of parents, uh, Paris, Berlin and Washington, changing uh, the order of the steps uh, agreed upon it then. Primarily, the point on transfer and control over the border with Russia to uh, Ukraine. Fundamental changes in Kyiv's position in these directions were not expected. Firstly, influential fo uh, forces in the United States, uh, under the patronage of which the Kyiv authorities are, are interested in the maintaining the conflict of the border with Russia. Secondly, in Ukraine, the position of the party of war, represented by radical uh, nationalists, uh, are very strong. And thirdly, a significant part of the Ukraine, Ukrainian uh, population is focused uh, on ending the war ex uh, exclusively on Kyiv's term. As a result, Zelensky continued the course of Poroshenko, uh, whose policies uh, he sharply cr criticized, uh, criticized uh, during the election campaign. Relatively speaking, the president has changed but the political course and vector of the country's movement has not changed, which led uh, to the uh, intensification of the crisis in the relations with Russia and led to the current situation. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Konstantin. Uh, can, yes, thank you, Dr. Konstantin. Uh, as we understand, it's very important to understand the situation, the historical situation, as Dr. Konstantin has mentioned, in order to understand the discourse of the, con the current con uh, situation right now. And in order to continue, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Ale Yurov, my previous supervisors, and uh, yeah. someone who is an expert in Brazilian foreign, po foreign policy, as well as uh, how uh, Brazil would be affected or maybe not uh, on the current events. And later on, we'll be uh, giving the floor for everyone who has questions. And you, please, you can write these questions down and we'll be uh, answering them accordingly. Dr. Mm -hmm. Ali Urubna, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. At last, I finished with all technical difficulties and <laughs> joined a group. I'm a specialist in Brazil and foreign policy and diplomacy of Brazil, of course, and I can show my latest book, The History of Foreign Policy and Diplomacy of Brazil, and now we are translating it in English. Uh, but uh, to tell some words about Ukraine, I could uh, tell that uh, there are a lot of double standards in the position of West and especially of the United States of America. We all now know that without uh, referendum uh, in Crimea, we could get uh, American uh, military base in uh, now our frontiers. And it was uh, the common decision of the population of Crimea during the referendum. And now we see a very complicated, difficult situation in uh, Donbass uh, and uh, uh, other, in two republics, uh, uh, especially in Donbass. The people wanted, they didn't want to leave Ukraine at the state, but they wanted the, the respect of their choice. They wanted to use Russian language because a lot of population there are Russian. And during eight years, nobody uh, wanted to note that there was a civil war of the Ukrainian Nazi, 
of uh, the Ukrainian hitmen who killed, killed, and killed the uh, servant people uh, in uh, Donbass. In during eight uh, year, year, years, we can tell about fourteen thousand killed people. And as uh, Doctor Konstantin showed, he is the, the greatest, the biggest specialist in. Uh, uh, Ukrainian foreign policy and uh, Ukrainian-Russian relations. Uh, our country tried to use different formats, different uh, kind of negotiations to resolve this situation. And uh, it was impossible. I think um, uh, you can see the map. And uh, now our country is speaking about security, about common security, security for every one country. But we see military bases around our frontiers. And now everybody, I hope that in Brazil, everybody now knows about uh, biological uh, laboratories, American biological laboratories on the territory of Ukraine. There were a lot of dangers for our country. And uh, I think it was a very difficult choice for my president, for our uh, uh, leaders uh, to begin the preventive war against the Ukrainian Nazis. I think it's uh, the own chance uh, to resolve this uh, crucial situation. And I would like to add uh, some one interesting fact, uh, one more interesting fact. Uh, Joseph Biden and uh, his son Hunter Biden, uh, they had um, a lot of business on the territory of the Ukraine. And one of uh, interesting facts is uh, that I think they are trying to get rid of uh, the knowledge about the activity on the territory of Ukraine. It's a multi-step uh, operation, multi-step operation uh, from the West. I hope that the war uh, can be finished in t shortest time. I hope. But uh, I think uh, there was uh, no other ch chance to do it. Uh, you can compare on the situation in Belarus. It uh, looks like a situation in Venezuela. When uh, the West, the collective West, uh, tried uh, to break uh, the power of uh, a legal president of this country. We saw the chance uh, to try um, to organize a uh, gold start in Kazakhstan. We see that uh, nobody wanted to think about general security for everybody. And uh, I can compare once more the situation with the civil war in Spain. It was internal thing, but uh, there were a lot of uh, participants from different countries who tried to follow their own things. It's uh, very difficult uh, to speak about the war. I like uh, to discuss much more about diplomacy methods of uh, nego negotiation, of resolving contradictions, and uh, Santos and me, we wrote about it, about the policy of Brazil, peaceful policy of Brazil, uh, trying uh, to use the preventive diplomacy. But in this case, we had no chance to use uh, the preventive uh, diplomacy. I think so. Thank, thank you, Dr. Barzova. Uh, we have a question for Dr. Konstantin. Uh, which is from Andrea Pacheco, uh, Dr. Andrea Pacheco. And it, she's asking if it's clear to see the escalation of this conflict, this conflict right now. And she's asking, do you see this conflict as a sign or an indication of a new or, uh, world order following the 9-11? Mm -hmm. Dr. Constantine? Is he with us? Yeah, he, he should be here. Mm -hmm. We use negotiations. We use negotiations. We try to look for some decision of this conflict. But just now, 
we don't have uh, the chance to understand each other. And we see a lot of uh, participants, mercenaries, international mercenaries on the territory of Ukraine. It's very difficult to tell about the short uh, fin of this conflict, the short end, the end of this conflict in short time. I think so. Thank you, Dr. Borzava. Dr. Konstantin is here. Mm -hmm. He's back. Okay, Dr. Konstantin, we have two questions. <laughs> One is from Dr. Andrea Pacheco. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, excuse me, uh, technical problems. Uh, yes, uh, our president, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, uh, says uh, that uh, uh, about the situation that we um, uh, that we uh, deals uh, with the empire of lies. United States is an empire of lies. Many many years uh, ago, President Reagan uh, calls uh, Soviet Union uh, empire of uh, evil. And now the United States is an uh, empire of lies. There is uh, all, uh, this country uh, control uh, all uh, international sources of information. And so they could uh, transfer uh, anything uh, for uh, not uh, uh, have any uh, really uh, facts. Sorry for my English. Mm -hmm. And I can add uh, that uh, in the uh, dialogue between our embassy in the Vatican with uh, uh, Pope Francisco, Fran uh, Pope Francisco said that he heard nothing about victims uh, in Donbass. He heard nothing. He knew nothing. It's uh, the result of uh, what uh, Dr. Konstantin said about uh, the limited information for all uh, the world, except for what is uh, comfortable for the United States, except for that information. Thank you, Dr. Barzova. I have another question from Cristina Carvalho. She's asking if, uh, if Putin uh, already consider uh, the events in Kyiv and if it's, if it's already expected uh, to see the occupation of the two republics, uh, the separatist republics, uh, or um, to occupy the whole Ukraine, the whole of Ukraine as at the moment, it was a surprise for all of us or not? Uh, President Putin said that Russia will not occupy the uh, Ukraine. Russia have some uh, uh, aims in Ukraine. Uh, they are demilitarization, denazification, and uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, have an opportunity uh, to develop this country as a friendly with Russia. Thank you very much. I would like to ask if there are any, is there any more questions? I have one, I have one question actually to Dr. Borzova. How do you see now like that we are of course seeing that a lot of these events are transforming the way uh, we see the world, it's security, international relation, and many other forms. We see right now that in Brazil, the place of gas and oil and other commodities are more expensive, which is a concern, of course, for Brazilians who are working and who does not have the benefit to have international assets, for instance. And how do you see in the near future how this uh, crisis can escalate in the prices, not only in Brazil, but also in, the, uh, in, Latin, Amer in Latin America in general? Like, would you see that the leaders of Latin America, they would be able to stop uh, the prices from rising or not? Thank you, Dr. Bertova. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for your question. Uh, you know that Russia 
sold the gas to Europe, sold during many years, and never broke its uh, obligations, never played with prices on gas. And situation European Union around the gas uh, is not our fault. It's the fault of European himself. And what about uh, Latin America? I think it's necessary to be quiet. Uh, without any panic and uh, to think about integration. There, uh, there is a lot of um, gas in Latin America. And I think, uh, be quiet, be quiet, don't worry about the price on the gas. All the, after the finish, after the finishing of uh, this war, I think some um, world order will change will change and it's necessary to think about china about india about iran about uh, other states who are who are going that uh, the world can hear their voice and of course brazil and of course brazil and uh, they must take part in the forming the new world's order more comfortable for everybody, not only for United States. Thank and the very... situation in Europe with gas, of course, is a partly a fault of the United States. When the situation became critical, United States promised to put their uh, liquid gas to Europe, but instead preferred to transfer it to China because the, the price was higher. So it's <laughs> the friend, the real friend in need. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have another question for Dr. Konstantin. He has only uh, 20 minutes. He's asking now, the Patriarch Kirill has made harsh statements about Ukrainians. What is the real role of the Orthodox Church in the formation of opinion in Russia? Mm -hmm. Dr. Konstantin? Uh, the position of uh, Orthodox uh, Church of Russia uh, is uh, uh, support uh, the official position of uh, Russian uh, authority. Uh, 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 Russian Orthodox uh, uh, people in Ukraine have uh, great problems for many, many years. Uh, nationalists uh, uh, gave the um, churches uh, from Russian uh, Orthodox Church. Uh, they uh, have uh, many, uh, many, uh, many problems with uh, uh, with using uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, to take. Uh, uh, their needs maybe to take their needs religious needs yes sorry we have, uh, there's a technical issue there's another question uh, is there any evidence in this conflict that the international relation theories didn't foresee in their studies any new reactions or tactics it's very difficult i think uh, to tell about some theory of international relations. We can tell about this, uh, it uh, when we uh, can analyze after the end of this conflict. Yes, I would, I would just add, I, could, I would like to add something actually. I would say that when you look at international relations, usually when we study international relations, we say that there are two lines in international relations that are very pivotal. One is diplomacy, the other one is the military. And in this case, as you could see, that this conflict has gone on for 80 years and over. And we could see that all the diplomatical methods that are used to safeguard even the theories of international relations itself did not uh, prevail. And therefore, we come to the next part with the military, to which we will enhance the, now the dialogues that is in discussion right now. So we can see that all these reactions and tactics, I don't see, we don't see anything new here because we can compare it with the other conflicts that had before in the past and in other regions. And as we can see, as Putin said himself, Russia was already used to sanctions. And as mm -hmm. we can see that these 
sanctions that are being imposed right now was of course foreseen by the Kremlin, uh, which is not evident. And that's why maybe uh, we need a whole change, not only in, in the organizations that we have right now, such as the United Nations, the Security Council, in order to see new tactics, new reactions, and then have, therefore see new ways uh, of uh, new uh, diplomatical um, agreements. Of course, quite agree with you. And I would like to add some about uh, double stem standards of USA. You know that United States bought uh, oil from our country uh, when they refused to buy it uh, from Venezuela. But now, as the result of their sanctions, they refused to buy our oil. And now they begin uh, negotiations with Venezuela again. First of all, they climbed uh, Maduro, uh, they um, tried to organize some kind of orange revolution on the territory of Venezuela, and now they stop speaking about sanctions about Venezuela when uh, they had the need uh, to buy <laughs> oil from this country. So their reaction, their attitude toward Venezuela changed greatly. And what about Cuba? Cuba lives dura, during uh, six, uh, 60 years under sanctions. And they live. And we adopted to the sanctions and will adopt in the future. Dr. Borzov, we have one question. Is uh, your opinion about China's role in this conflict? As we know so far that China has been very neutral. And so we'll, uh, Claudia Oliveira is asking, how do you see China's role in this conflict? I think uh, that first of all, Chinese uh, maybe not approve com completely, but um, in some part they approve our activity because they suffer from uh, American sanctions themselves. And uh, they think about a more just world. No, more just a regulation of, of relations. And uh, you must remember that every fourth person in the world is Chinese. And it's necessary uh, to take uh, in mind uh, their opinion. First of all, uh, they are neutral. And later we will see. We have one more question about, from Lauro. Asioli, he's asking, would the Russian media also be limited to only showing the Russian side? What happens to Russians who come forward against the president's actions? About our comfort, Russians. Uh, he's asking uh, if how media, Russian media is being limited uh, no. from the Russian side. And also he's asking what happens to Russians who stand against uh, the president's actions? But uh, they can tell their opinion. Those uh, who are against uh, the president's uh, activity. There are no limits. And he's asking about the media. Uh, is it being actually controlled? Is it being limited by the Russian side or not? But you can see during um, each uh, press conference of our president, there are representatives from different media. And they can uh, give their question to our president without any organization, uh, without any limit. And uh, what about the limit of um, Instagram? There were some attempts uh, to call to kill Russians everywhere, to kill Russians everywhere. And uh, uh, I'm quite agree that it was necessary to cancel the activity of uh, this line of media. It's unnecessary, it's impossible to tell about the killing of each per, uh, every person in the world. It's impossible. Uh, I'd like to hear from Danielle Silva that Dr. Constantine had to leave and he's not here at the moment, so he would not be able to answer the question. Uh, I would like to know if there is any more question to Dr. Barzova. Mm -hmm. What about question? What kind of question? He's asking uh, many historians and other academic outside the ER are claim we are witnessing the beginning of a Cold War 2.0. Do you agree? 
a cold war if it's a new cold war uh do you agree that it's a new cold war being installed i think it will be the beginning of a new world order I don't know it if it will be Cold War zero two two zero, but um, uh, we are united in our world. The world is too little now, too small, and uh, it will be impossible to follow the Cold War for a long time. We are very united. We Thanks. depend from each other. Thank you. Is there any more questions? I don't think there is any more questions. I would like to thank everyone for being in this uh, in this meeting today, in this opening lecture. I'd like to thank Dr. Konstantin Petrovich for being here to give me his uh, to shed some light in the recent events. I'd like mm -hmm. to also address the fact that. Uh, all the informations that we see or hear in Russia that we are right now or in the West or in Brazil itself, it's very important for us as academics, students, and many other people from all different types of uh, path of uh, life to be careful what you see and analyze. It's important to understand the history, the cultural intertwine that they have, uh, both, both sides have. And also, I think it's important for us to understand the literature involved and to be, of course, aware that information and means information is very huge in the 21st century. And therefore, we have to um, take some part in the directions to which uh, we want mm -hmm. to, uh, to lead. And therefore, mm -hmm. I think it's very important to, to hear both sides, to understand the diplomatic reasons and why we study international relations for the first place. And uh, as we understand, diplomacy, yes, is the key uh, for many of the issues that are being, uh, happening right now. And I do agree with Ala Barzova that Brazil, and not only Brazil, uh, but other countries, they should stand together in order to uh, find new political or diplomatic ways of solving issues. And I would like to thank everyone for giving us the floor to speak, uh, to, sh to share our knowledge. And I'd like to thank Dr. Barzova for being here and so interested in Brazil as well. And Andrea Pacheco, who invited us, and everyone else, Chris, Dr. Christina as well. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's it for today. I hope uh, you guys um, understood a little bit of what is going on from this side mm -hmm. of the world. And uh, of course, uh, we are open for receiving your inquiries. If you have any, any questions or anything further, you could directly contact us at uh, the university, or Dr. Berzova personally, or Dr. Konstantin Petrovic. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.